Your Royal Highness, ladies and gentlemen, <coughs> I love surfing. I started too late in life to ever be any good at it. I'm actually pretty crappy, um, but I love it. I love being out there in the water, um, in uh, the element. And the, the fact that the wave that comes along is momentary, um, that it's only there for a little moment. And when the wave comes, it has within it this ancient elemental force that has been there since the beginning of time. And if you time it just right, and if you use the experience that you've built trying to catch waves and failing and trying and failing again, and if I use all my strength and try to align it with this tremendous power that's coming with the ocean, then maybe, just maybe, I'll be able to catch a wave. Okay, so you're paddling and you can feel that the wave is coming. And you paddle some more and you look over your shoulder to see where it is. And your board is tilting forward because of the force of the wave and you're gaining speed. So two more hard strokes and then you put your hands down on the board and you pop up. And you actually stand on your board and for that little moment, that fleeting moment when you're there, you realize this very important insight. You are nature. There's no us and nature. People are nature, humans are nature. And if we really understand this, if we really feel this truth, I think it's easier for us to make the right decisions and to take better care of our planet. Because, after all, taking care of nature is taking care of ourselves. For 14 years, I have been lucky enough to work with the United Nations Development Programme as a goodwill ambassador. Uh, and I've been focusing firstly on the Millennium Development Goals and now the Sustainable Development Goals. And this has taken me around the world. And some years ago, I was in Guatemala. And as you know, Guatemala has a dramatic history. A really devastating civil war that lasted for decades. And this, when I was there, was years after the civil war was over. But still, they were finding remains of victims. Children, adults, elderly people, mostly in the Mayan villages uh, in the countryside. And they were trying to identify them, because many of the houses were burned to the ground, and also the villages were completely destroyed, the crops were destroyed. So there was this program, Restarting Agriculture. And they were working together, the national authorities, the local authorities, and the international community with the UN. And people were giving some resources to buy seeds, to buy tools. There was some funding for training, so that uh, they could restart agriculture the way they had been doing it before the war. And one of, in one of these Maya villages, I met Mateo, who's in the blue shirt at the picture. And Mateo was leader of his farmer's organization, and he told me about this program quite matter-of-factly, how it all worked technically. But the time when he got emotional and a tear came to his eye was when he concluded, for us, this is about livelihoods, freedom, and the possibility of living a life with dignity. So why am I telling you this story here at EAT? Well, because food is about more than nutrition for the body. Food is also a powerful tool for peace building. A few years later, I went to Zambia. And here I met Pamela. And she lived in a farming community as well. And in this area, they had been growing corn, only corn, as a monoculture, 
which made the soil vulnerable uh, to floods, to droughts. So there was an initiative to diversify their crops. And the UN again worked with local authorities and got this program in place and they were offering training that they gave some support in order to make the first investment a reality. And Pamela was one of the beneficiaries of this program and she was, trying, she was uh, now growing different types of beans and grains and they even had bees so they could produce honey. And Pamela had told me that um, for her this was a game changer. She was a young woman, a single mother, four children. And because of this program, she was able to put all her kids through school. And when I asked her what the most important result of this program was to her, she answered, I am not dependent on any man. Because she was able to do all of this by, her, by herself and create this income for her and her family through the patch of land that she had, without being dependent on a man. So for, for, for Pamela, food was not only about nutrition for the body, it was about security, empowerment, education, autonomy, development, and sustainability. These structures and challenges are complex, and that's why we need places like EAT, where you can take this complex world and make it understandable to make the rest of us understand and show us the way forward. So here we are. We have a world where there is violence, suffering, pollution, climate change, but also knowledge, deep understanding, peace building, awareness, great courage and love. And underneath it all is a, is a treasure that's hidden in plain view. Simple and challenging. All of us are given the gift of being able to change things for the better. We can all contribute in a positive way. And what better place than to start here at EAT. So I want to leave you today with three thoughts. One. Think about a problem that you are passionate about solving. Two, find people that share your passion. And three, set the target for what you want to do about it this year together. Passion and purpose. Thank you for your attention.